the natural wonders of the karst world are truly a sight to behold. The Postoina Cave is probably one of the most renowned karst caves in the world, and undeniably the main Slovene tourist attraction, known to millions of people worldwide. Seknica Polje and Lake are among the most famous cast polliers in the world. The intermittent lake, home to various birds, is an ornithologist paradise. The Škocijan Caves and Plitvica Lakes are included on the UNESCO World Heritage Site List due to their uniqueness. The karst region covers almost half of Slovenia and Croatia. Most of it is a part of the so-called Dinaric karst that stretches from Slovenia's Ljubljana to Albania. Most of the territory of the western part of the Slovene and Croatian border is also karst. Karst is characterized by a lack of surface waters, sparse soil, as well as broken, bare, rocky terrain. Due to these characteristics, karst can be a difficult landscape to live on. Karst covers only 7 to 12 percent of the Earth's surface. Despite this, it supplies drinking water to almost a quarter of the world's population. In Slovenia and Croatia, karst springs provide drinking water to almost half of the inhabitants. The development of karst relies on precipitation, which is enriched with carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and in the soil it infiltrates to form a weak carbonic acid that dissolves carbonate rocks. The infiltration of precipitation is rapid due to the thin soil cover and high permeability. Precipitation diffuses through the crevices and fissures on the rocky surface into the underground. Watercourses that collect water in non-cast areas also sink in the cast underground through open conduits and caves. Contact cast occurs at the geological boundary between carbonate and non-carbonate rocks. An example is Podgrasko Podolje, northeast of Slavnik on the Croatian border. The rivers that flow into the contact cast from non-karstic rocks create characteristic landforms such as blind valleys, sinkholes and ponor caves. The Blind Valley is a river valley with a continuous watercourse that becomes wider on limestone covered with a layer of less permeable deposits. The valley abruptly ends with a steep semicircular headwall where the watercourse sinks into a vertical shaft. Two typical examples of Blind Valleys are Brezovica and Odolina in Pograjsko Podolje. Rivers that disappear through ponors flow deep into the unknown underground. In some places, the subterranean portions of these watercourses can be accessed through caves that are connected to the surface. The water which sinks into karst near Slivje can be seen in the Dimnitsa cave. Underground, waters may converge into larger conduits and passages and flow towards karst springs. The waters of sinking streams in Podgrajsko Podolje flow underground towards the Rijana Spring and the Croatian Springs in Croatia. Contact cast has developed on the Slovene and Croatian border of North Istria. 
numerous small rivers have formed blind valleys where the rivers sink into ponors and caves. The most picturesque ponor is Butori, where a small stream flows into a collapsed dough line in a waterfall and then disappears underground through a shaft. The areas of carbonate rocks containing sufficient void spaces for infiltration and storage of water are called karst aquifers. The water there occupies void spaces of different shapes and sizes. The pores between the rock grains, fissures and karst conduits form favorable conditions for a generally rapid flow of water underground. Different parts of the aquifers can be identified based on the characteristics of water flow and water storage. In the upper part, termed the unsaturated and vado zone, the quick vertical stream flow in the main drainage conduits and the slow percolation through the fissured matrix intertwine. This dry part of the aquifer, where the pores are only occasionally filled with water, can be hundreds of meters thick. The lower part is called the saturated or phreatic zone. This zone is filled with water. The stream flow here is sub-horizontal in the channels, fissures and porous base matrix in the direction of the springs. The area between the vados and phreatic zones is called the floodwater or epiphreatic zone. In high water stages, the void spaces in this zone are filled with water. In low water stages, they remain dry. The water level in the epiphreatic zone fluctuates constantly. It is most affected by the amount of surface water recharge from the surface. Fluctuations in stream flow and the storage of water underground are typical for cast. The volume and velocity of water moving through cast is much higher in comparison to non-cast aquifers and can reach hundreds of meters per hour. Different hydrological conditions can cause the velocity and direction of the underground stream flow to change so that certain parts of the aquifer contribute water to different springs. The cast aquifer drains through numerous cast springs. These springs are of vital importance to a great number of inhabitants, since they are their most important source of drinking water. The presence of man on cast is strongly connected to the natural resources there. The cast surface is rocky, very diverse and unsuitable for cultivation due to its thin soil cover. There is usually no water on the cast surface either, as most of it flows underground immediately. For these reasons, the cast has never been densely populated. The people who persevered there lived modestly and worked hard to survive. In the past, settlement was closely linked to water resources such as sinkhole ponds, active caves and cast springs. If there were no springs, people used precipitation collectors to obtain water. Over time, larger urban settlements developed alongside traffic routes. Such developments now pose a threat to the karst landscape and even more to the water in the karst aquifers. Every karst spring has a recharge area. This can include cast and non-cast areas from where surface and underground waters flow towards the spring. The areas delimited by water flows towards different springs and river basins are known as watersheds. A unique characteristic of cast is that water from a certain area can flow toward different springs at different times. The recharge areas of different springs may thus overlap.
tap water in the southwestern part of Slovenia, in Istria and northern Kvarna most likely comes from one of the larger karst springs. Two of the largest karst springs are the Rijana spring and the Sveti Ivan spring near Buzet. The Rijana Springs recharge area covers an area of about 247 square kilometers. It has supplied drinking water to the Slovene littoral since 1935. The amount of water from the Rijana Spring is generally sufficient for the needs of about 80,000 inhabitants. But under dry conditions during the summer tourist season, there can be a water shortage. The Rijana water plant was built in 1997. It uses an ultrafiltration system for water purification in its plant in Tsepki. The Sveti Ivan spring near Buzet was first used for the Istrian regional water system in 1933. The water from the spring is filtered and chlorinated. The amount of water pumped is up to 300 litres per second, but less than 110 litres per second during summer droughts. Water from the Bular Spring near Istarske Toplice compensates for this deficiency. Karst aquifers are highly vulnerable to the consequences of pollution due to their unique characteristics. As water moves through the underground, it can carry with it pollutants from the surface. In a non-cast aquifer, the diffuse pollution slowly penetrates through the pores between the soil particles, allowing some pollutants to decompose before they reach the water source. Potential pollution spreads in cast aquifers. For cast, the extremely quick permeation of fluids into the underground is typical. The decomposition and retention of pollutants are low due to the thin soil layer and sparse vegetation. When the pollutants enter the aquifer, their velocity through cast conduits can be very high, sometimes exceeding 100 meters per hour. For this reason, the pollutants can reach the spring in high concentrations. Remoteness from the water spring does not necessarily mean greater protection against pollution. The most common sources of pollutants of cast waters are household, municipal and industrial wastewaters, contaminated road and parking lot runoff, and leachates from unauthorized dumping, as well as from inadequately built landfills. The quality of cast water is also threatened by farming, where inappropriate use and overuse of pesticides and poorly controlled manure facilities are common. Construction activities also threaten underground cast waters, since the overburden, the only protective layer of an aquifer, is often removed. Accidental spills of harmful substances also pose a significant danger to cast waters. Cast springs are thus extremely susceptible to pollution and must be appropriately and carefully managed. The basis for proper cast protection is a good understanding of cast aquifer characteristics and functions. Due to various types of groundwater flow, the conditions for the passage of pollutants into cast underground waters are extremely hard to predict. When, how much and for how long the pollution of a spring will occur if its recharge area becomes polluted can only be successfully predicted if one knows the hydrogeological and geological characteristics of the affected area. Pollution remediation in a karst region is very difficult and only possible in exceptional cases. If remediation is to be effective, it is especially important to understand the transport rate and potential flow paths through a karst aquifer. Due to the diverse structure of karst aquifers, Classic hydrogeological and geological methods are no substitute for comprehensive research using the most up-to-date methods. The basic research approach in many studies is monitoring the physical and chemical parameters of spring water.
More recently, numerous studies have been conducted by thoroughly analyzing selected chemical parameters. First, scientists conduct a field study in which they sample spring water or water in accessible caves at carefully chosen intervals according to hydrological conditions. The analyses are then carried out in labs. A precondition for proper protection requires being well acquainted with cast water characteristics. A decree on the water protection area must be based on prior scientific findings to ensure the best possible protection and pollution prevention measures. The recharge area of a spring is divided into water protection zones with different degrees of protection based on vulnerability. Within each zone, permitted, limited and prohibited activities are determined. The highest levels of protection are assigned to the most vulnerable cast areas, where pollution could have catastrophic consequences. Considerable research has confirmed that underground cast water flows are not influenced or delimited by political borders. The protection of transboundary aquifers is more effective when activities are coordinated on both sides of the border. Intergovernmental cooperation between Slovenia and Croatia is essential for the health and welfare of the inhabitants on both sides of the border. Cooperation in the research of transboundary aquifers and the determination of protection measures is necessary. Intergovernmental cooperation in raising the awareness of karst and karst water resources is also very important. People are a part of the continuous water cycle as well as the guardians of this exceptional natural resource. It is of vital importance that we realize that we can destroy it or preserve it for many generations to come.